It seems that Mr. Rogan cannot catch a break. He goes from controversy to controversy. If he is not uh, spreading harmful information that misses, then he must say the N-word. Clearly, he is a racist. Right now, African Americans in the United States, as I've been told, have to deal with several huge issues like unemployment, inflation, and Joe Rogan. So if only Joe Rogan would stop doing the worst harm on earth, which is that of speaking, African Americans would be far more safer. So it is up to the Twitler youth to get Joe Rogan cancelled to protect simple folk like us from his podcast because uh, we are hypnotized by it like Mowgli was hypnotized by the snake car. We just can't find that little X button and close it for ourselves. But luckily, the moral busybodies and the gatekeepers of our democracy are, are able to do that for us. Now, what's interesting is that initially Joe Rogan was accused, as I mentioned before, of spreading that harmful information that misses. And everyone was outraged, but a couple of Hollywood actors and other celebrities decided to stand with Joe. And as I'm quaking in my chair, shivering with fear, thinking, oh, who's going to save me from the misinformation now? It seems that all is lost. A video appears which saves the day. A video in which Joe Rogan, for the past 12 years, has uttered naughty words. He has been a very naughty, naughty boy. He had a potty mouth. And because of that, of course, he needs to disappear from the internet. It just so happens that different problems have the same solution. The solution for misinformation is to censor Joe Rogan. The solution for Joe Rogan saying the N-word is to censor Joe Rogan. I'm pretty sure that the next hurdle that Joe Rogan finds himself in is going to have a similar solution to censor Joe Rogan. Now, initially, when I heard about him saying the N-word, I thought, wow, that makes him look very presidential, doesn't it? Maybe he can run for presidency in the next election on behalf of the Democrats, of course, because they're the only ones allowed to say the word and get away with it. But no, apparently not. Apparently he is a very bad, bad man. And if you defend him, you're a bad, bad man yourself. How dare you defend him? So it raises an interesting question. Is he going to get a job at the Young Turks if he gets the platform from Spotify? And the second interesting question, how is it possible that only after... He got out of the first controversy as more and more famous people and celebrities start defending him. Another video drops, which makes it bad for everyone that defended him. So now people have to backtrack and apologize and say, Oh, well, I wanted to defend the Joe, but now he's too radioactive. I, I, I don't want to defend him anymore. I mean, he uttered the power word fire. Are you crazy? Misinformation is one thing. I mean, sure, it, it can put grandma underground, but no, this is too much for me. I mean, he, he's now singing rap lyrics. He's now like the U.S. president. That, that is too much. So how is it possible that this video comes just in the nick of time? I mean, can you imagine the work involved? He's got 12 years of podcast, three or four hours each. I mean, I'm a fan of Joe Rogan, but even I wouldn't be subjected to that. That is like torture to watch every single podcast just to snipe for the word. So who are these offense necromancers, these offense archaeologues that are unearthing Joe's potty mouth like Indiana Jones finding secret treasures in ancient temples? Well, that's a good question. Apparently, the name of the people that want to keep you safe from evil heretical podcasts are hiding behind a Twitter account called Patriotic Takes. And they issued the following statement. This past week, Patriotic Takes republished and brought to the national attention dozens of recorded instances where Joe Rogan used the N-word. So in other words, I, I want you to understand what is happening, okay? Like the N-word is a word that crushes a person's spirit. So it's a word so powerful, it should never be used under any circumstance, except if you're the US president or the Young Turks. And because of that, because so few people managed to see Joe Rogan using the word, now it needs to be unearthed and brought to national attention so more people can see it. And this is not the fault of the patriotic texts who are unearthing the offense to keep you from being offended. No, it is the offense of Joe Rogan. But if I were to push the video here on this channel with Joe Rogan saying the harmful incantations, then I would get a community guideline strike because I'm not patriotic takes. Don't try to understand American logic, my fellow Europeans. It just hurts your brain. 
But suffice to say, Joe Rogan is a racist. Words don't matter based on context. They matter based on political leanings, who gets to say them, and you're not allowed to say them under any circumstance. Even if you're reporting the news on someone else that said it. Okay? Uh, whatever. I digress. Back to patriotic takes, which apparently does not accept Joe Rogan's apology. It, it's almost like they're not offended. It's almost like the type of people who spend a lot of time going through years of podcasts just to fish out the N-words are not really offended by the word itself. I mean, it, it seems they have the inhumane ability of hearing the word and nothing bad happening to them. So it's almost like they have a different agenda. It, it's, it's almost like they don't really care about whether the word is offensive or not. They just want reason to deplatform Joe Rogan, which is why they don't accept his apology, which is why, Joe, you shouldn't have apologized. I mean, it's very difficult for me to defend Joe now. You know, I, I say, look, the U.S. president has said the word in the past. No one cared. The U.S. president has said the word more recently. No one cared. I don't think it's a big issue. Well, no, because Joe thinks it's a big issue. He apologized. Like, even he knows. See? I just got BTFO. It's almost like the apology isn't for you to actually say you're sorry and you're willing to move on and be a better person. It's almost like the apology is when they accuse you of doing stuff that they don't care about and they know it's bullshit. And you apologizing means that you admit your guilt and they can move forward with the prosecution. So what is the prosecution? Well, the only solution, again, is for Spotify to ban Joe Rogan. So why are they so interested in banning Joe Rogan? What, what exactly do they have to gain? Well, if you look at who Patriot Takes is, it also says here that they are partnered with the Medias Touch. And they're very interested in the world knowing that they were responsible for the viral video, which according to them, received millions of views. In other words, millions of people were harmed based on patriotic takes for releasing the N-word into their ears. So the next logical question is, who is Medias Touch? Well, Medias Touch, according to Variety magazine, is a Democrat super PAC. In other words, they're doing activism and they're collecting money in order to help the Democrats. Behind Medias Touch, how three brothers slam Donald Trump daily with razor-sharp viral videos. So, who are these brothers? Well, according to Variety magazine, the brothers by the name of Ben Brett, Jordan M M I I can't. No, seriously, I can't. I I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just a Romanian. I want to. Okay, I'm not racist towards Americans, but come on. E even I have my limits. Who have deep connections to the entertainment industry. Hmm, very interesting. So they're professionals. Ben 35 is a litigator and civil rights attorney who represents exiled NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick. He is a video editor and former head of a post-production and social media Ellen and Jordan 27 is an executive of Steve Stout's branding and marketing firm Translation. So in other words, these are professionals both in the realm of political activism as well as in the realm of manipulating social media and video editing says here, while the facts and footage are well known, seeing it all edited together is damning. And this is exactly what they are doing. They are doing hatch jobs against political opponents of the Democrats. So the question is, what do they have to gain by going after Joe Rogan? At the end of the day, Joe Rogan isn't a political operative. Well, if you look at the numbers, the most popular person on cable in the English speaking world right now is Tucker Carlson. Joe Rogan is miles more popular than Tucker Carlson. He is far more popular than any person on cable. And because of that popularity, he can actually sway people to vote one way or another based on his podcasts. And that is the actual danger. The actual danger is a racismus towards black people. The actual danger is questions and words that should not be uttered because it hurts the Democrats winning the next election. And as such, there is great prestige in anyone that manages to take Joe Rogan down. This is why Patriotic Takes want you to know that their video went viral and got millions of views. This is why Patriotic Takes want you to know that they are the ones responsible for the video. Because this gives them clout. This raises their prestige. In other words, if you're a Democrat... You can hire patriotic takes to take down your political opponents through smear jobs because they've managed to take down Joe Rogan. And if they took down Joe Rogan, they can take down anyone.
So this is what the game is about. It's about power, prestige, and clout. And the only way Joe Rogan can win is not by apologizing, but by having all of us standing up and saying, no more, enough, we don't care, go away. I personally have had enough of moral busybodies that get to tell other people what they are allowed and what they aren't allowed to watch. People who constantly say, oh, my democracy is so important. This is a democracy. You have Joe Rogan putting out a product. If Joe Rogan is offensive, then people wouldn't watch him. He is the most popular person right now, which means that the people have voted with their time and their wallet by giving Joe Rogan views. It is not okay for a fringe minority of far-left extremists to be the gatekeepers of what mature adults are and aren't allowed to consume in their own free time, in their own free bedroom. We need to tell them enough. And if they go like, oh, but so you're okay with your... Yes, I'm okay. I am more offended that you get to decide what other people get to see and you're being so condescending that you think you have the right to infringe on what other people get to, to see and whatnot. I am more offended by companies hiring people like you than I'm offended of Joe Rogan, who apparently has a potty mouth. And as I mentioned before, he comes out a little bit presidential. And because you're not offended on those things, you're not offended on the Young Turks, you're not offended on Joe Biden, you're not offended on all the other people who said the N-word in the media in the last 12 years, leads me to think that you are not offended either. In reality, you just want to censor a political opponent. And this is the only way that this game can win. It's for us normal people to stand up and say, we are adults, we can decide what content we are allowed to watch and what content we aren't. And we need to call them out on their lies and their bullshit. They are not interested in protecting society from evil words. They are interested in gaining power and winning clout and dominating the conversation on social media. That's it. That's their interest. Call it out. And finally, I want to point out that they are seething right now because this is exactly what people are doing and it's working. So you have articles like this saying even the N-word won't get Spotify to the platform Joe Rogan. They're like children. They're crying because you took their toys away. Like, but, but we did our best. We, we threw everything. The kitchen sink and it still doesn't work. <laughs> Grow up. We're adults. Notice how most people on the Twitter youth that complain about Joe Rogan happen to be white. Did you, did you notice that? And, and I have seen plenty. A, a high significant number of black people being okay with it. And you know why? Because context matters. Every single instance where Joe Rogan has said the word, it was in context. It was exactly like the Young Turks did it. Either on reporting on someone else or talking about an issue. He, he didn't say it to another person, ever. Because no one, no one, not even the people from Patriotic Takes, not even the people from Vice, no one believes that Joe Rogan is actually a racist. No one believes that if Joe Rogan walks down the street, you're going to see black people running away. Because you can't judge the entire worth of a human being based on a single word taken out of context, goddammit. See, I said goddammit, does that make me religious? Do I believe in God and do I want him to damn it? Can you, can you tell if I'm an atheist or I'm a religious? I mean, I said goddammit, oh clearly I must be a Christian, right? Because I believe in God, I said it. It's absolutely ridiculous. And this is the culture that exists right now in the US. And, and do you know why this culture exists, by the way? Do, do you know? Who, who does it serve? I'll let the man that I actually enjoy listening to explain it to you. And you made a really good point. You said the thing is, if you censor yourself just 1%, you say, I'll just censor myself 1%. That's what they want. I'm going to make them happy. And then they're just going to keep moving it. They're just going to keep moving it forward, moving, moving, the goal it forward moving the goalposts and providing you with more money and giving you more things, but keep moving it in a certain direction. And if you keep giving into it, they're going to have a hold of you and they can control you.